escape me. Life happens, and it seems to be sprinting, leaving us in a cloud of dust. I have dubbed fall of 2018 the clash of the petals, because it sounds cuter than our life threw up flowers, bowls, and moving boxes, though the latter is much more accurate. Every aspect of our life collided. We have been in a constant state of triage, and it's tiring. Bulbs stacked against a neglected corner of the garage instead of being nestled in the ground. Moving boxes left packed in the midst of wreath making. And a bunk bed sitting in the hallway as the girls sleep on their mattresses on the floor. Not to mention all the normal life activities, all of which lie in between the chaos to make life sweet. Countless blessings creating unexpected madness while time continues to slip through my fingers. So yeah, life happens, but life also doesn't stop. I still have a huge pile of spring bulbs that need to get in the ground, and I have soil that needs to be amended and tilled, but I have a problem that I need to tackle first on that, so let me show you. When we walked to this piece of property that would become our future flower farm, we noticed something, something kind of big, that the patch of dirt is just that, it's barren. Well, obviously after having a hunch that something was wrong with the soil, we reached out to some of our neighbors and found out that twice a year, someone from the county would come over and spray this with a pre-emergent and some type of regular herbicide to take care of everything that was on here. A generic Roundup is is what we found out they like to use. Yeah. Um, along with some kind of pre-emergent. We had to do something. So after some quick Google searching, we found came up with about three options. First off, we could just wait. We could just give it time, let photocomposition and just water take it down to the level where it wouldn't be a harm to any of the plants anymore. But the problem with that is, is even though the chemicals are stated that they need about six months to start breaking down, which is why you treat it twice a year, is that it's built up in the soil. We're talking decades at this point where this has been getting treated most likely. So it could take years for that to naturally break down. And so it became a non-option. We, we can't wait. We have to have this growing here. We had to have tulips in the ground here this week. So we had to do something. We are our behind schedule. <laughs> Get going. Oh my gosh. I wanted to have these in early October after the first frost and here we are, you know, second week into November. We ain't got time for this. <laughs> so we looked at other options. One of the other ones that we came up with was we could take off the top two inches, maybe three inches of dirt and literally dispose of it and then bring in some new topsoil. That's expensive. You know, we'd have to have full, first off we'd have a tractor, which we don't have yet. We're not that cool. Goals. Yeah. Lots of goals. Yes. Yeah. So we'd have to take it off. We'd have to have a tractor. It's going to cost a lot of money to dump it, and it's going to cost a lot of money to bring it back in. Um, another option that kind of goes with that would be doing it in raised beds, but that's also not ideal. It's expensive, and also it takes up more space and it's, leaves us with less growing space. So that's not an option we want to go with It's definitely either. not cost effective for what we're doing. No, it's not. So that leaves us with option number three. <laughs> that's right. And so which we found this one, and it, it feels like it fits the best for us. And... It was quite interesting. This is, we're gonna put down a product that we personally use so much in our personal lives. I like to brush my teeth. <laughs> brush our teeth with it. <laughs> we give it to our girls when they have bad stomachs. We give it to, are we take it when we have bad stomachs? So what is this magic concoction? <laughs> Activated charcoal. We are going to absorb the toxins with activated charcoal. That's right. We actually bought 55 pounds of this and we're gonna kind of emulsify it in some water and we're gonna spray it down. And supposedly in less two than days. two days, it pretty much should absorb everything if we do it correctly. Yes. So here we go. Let's do it. Yes.
Okay, so it's not like the first bag wasn't bad enough and getting charcoal all over me, but now we have a second bag. We're getting back to this and we get going because we are running out of sunlight really quick. really satisfying yeah i i really enjoyed all the neighbors looks <laughs> <laughs> i always enjoy the neighbors they love us they think we're so weird <laughs> wow it was black death that's what we told them we told them all we were putting down the most concentrated weed killer that there was black death it was kind of fun in Watching and to be able to see the guide when you were painting made it pretty easy. It was genuinely satisfying putting it down. Yeah, other than yeah. the clogged part. So I had my chance where yeah. I decided to go out there and do it. And to be honest, I was so beyond frustrated that I just took the little nozzle thing off and just had at it. And then I got fired. Yeah. It... So <laughs> in case you want to know, you can be fired from your own job. Yes, you can. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when you don't do the speed mix, the speed mix like I did. Yeah. I did. I It was fine mixed. I think we just learned next go round, we're going to use a mesh sieve. Yeah. No, that'll be one of the recommendations that we do make. And actually, if you want any of these nitty gritty details, um, we do have a blog on the whole process. It goes into the mix ratios, the application, and then just a bunch of tricks that we did learn on it. Along with some of the nitty gritty lessons that we learned during the process, we're also going to put in the blog a little bit of the science of the why behind it and some of the research we personally found helpful yeah. through this process. So we're not dingbats. Yeah, it's um, actually a lot of the stuff that the research and science that we found that led us to this method that we did. Obviously, we kind of stated that a little bit in the mm -hmm. beginning, but we're going to kind of really go down in the detail and it's going to bore the so, hell out of a lot of people. <laughs> but if you're nerdy like me, <laughs> you will have fun. <laughs> this works even on a level that is a lot less severe than ours. If you're just looking to make your soil a little bit healthier, detoxify it maybe from some previous herbicide use, um, or some other, you know, elements that does absorb a lot of other things. Activated charcoal is not super particular on what it absorbs. It kind of is. It has to have an open electron to absorb. Go ahead. It does. I think that's how it works. It's got four open spots and that's why it bonds to everything. So the other one has to have an open electron. Okay, if you have something in your ground with an open <laughs> electron, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> then activated charcoal is for you. <laughs> so if you have the need for this for any particular reason, 
we went ahead and put a link down in the description down below and you can check that out and it'll take you right to the actual brand that we used. Um, and we did some research into it and it seemed like one of the best options out there. If you found this video helpful and liked what you see, be sure to share and subscribe. If you find a video helpful, then you leave a thumbs up. up. That's how it goes. If you haven't subscribed, do so already, so make sure you can stay up to date on all the new videos that we put out, all the different content. We have a lot coming down the pipes. And as always, we are looking forward to handing you some blooms soon.